Hello, hello, this is Devin with GitLab doing a quick video on artifacts and cache within the GitLab runner. I'm going to be using GitLab 12.3 and as you can see here I've got a blank project. So to get started I'm going to add a gem file for Ruby's bundler. This will just help us show some of the use cases for caching. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the CI YAML. get this kicked off and then we'll explain a little bit. So I am using the Docker executor. So we're using the, the Ruby image here. This is going to be the key, the cache path. So this is uh, set up on the, the root. So it'll apply for both of our jobs. The before script will execute before both of our jobs here. And this is the bundle install for that gem file. And it will be installing into that vendor path, which we then got set in our cache path. And then just two jobs that will print out when they run. So let's go take a look at the pipeline. All right, so for our build, you can see here the bundle install running and then collecting and installing all the necessary gems for the dependencies in our gem file. And then similarly here, we see the same bundle install, but rather than installing, it's using existing. So this, not a lot of value because I only have the one gem in the gem file, but if you had a large project or a lot of dependencies, this can come really in handy and save a lot of time. So let's take a look now at artifacts. So I'm going to modify the CI here. Get it kicked off. So the main difference here is I've added this artifacts key to the build job, and then I've got this set to an output path, and then to expire in five days. And then I've added an echo statement here to print out uh, output to this text file, so we can take a look at it. Jump over to the pipelines. Similarly, you'll notice our cache is now carried over to our second job. So again, if we had consecutive runs, this would be a lot quicker. You can see our output of our new statement and then the uploading of the artifacts. The other main difference here you'll see is on the right, I've got job artifacts. And here we can browse and navigate through any that we had. Some of the use cases for cache and, and artifacts. With cache, it's assumed that it doesn't matter what happens to that cache. So for example, if I were to delete or if I had other gem files or a new runner, nothing would impact my jobs. That cache can be invalidated at any given time and it won't affect my jobs. That may not be the case with artifacts. So artifacts could be passing a completed binary or web page if you have a job that's building a website. And you may want to consume that preview it or use it in some of your other jobs like deploying or building a docker file for example and the expiration on cache also doesn't apply to the same expiration with artifacts so hopefully this has been helpful a couple of quick examples of artifacts and cache and wish you the best of luck in using artifacts and caches in your own projects